I am so excited today to be talking to Linda Bradley, and she is a flower farmer. Linda, thanks for coming down and tell everybody the name of your farm and how you got such a fascinating title. Okay, sure. Um, the name of the farm is Purple Tudor, and I got the name because when I, I grew vegetables first, and when I was considering growing flowers, I had Jenks Farmer out to the farm, and he put in a couple of beds for me, and he said, you need some kind of art object out there. So he designed these tutors that are made out of rebar, and they have um, little tools on the top. Because he's so artistic, yes. he has to make everything fun. Yes. And when he got them installed, he wasn't happy with them because you couldn't see them. So he sent his assistant down to the hardware store to buy purple paint because I had a purple <laughs> shirt on and he knew I liked purple. And therefore the name of the farm. But yes. it's really, really fun. And it's um, fun because that is such a bright color and you have a wonderful way of doing things with your flowers. How do y'all um, make your flowers available pe to people? Uh, we have subscriptions that we deliver to homes and businesses. It, we have those over three seasons, so early spring and then summer, and then we'll do another one late summer and fall. And so um, you said that really you have a hoop house now. Mm -hmm. You can start things early. Yes. We actually grow year round, uh, but in the colder months, things go dormant. Mm -hmm. So we just tend them until it's ready for them to bloom again. And then, um, and then you also now have a nice air conditioned building where you and the ladies who work with you can make the arrangements. Yes. And then you've got a cooler. Yes, to store the flowers. The first year that we grew, we just had the field and we didn't have a cooler and it's very inefficient. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's like cooking without a refrigerator. And you deliver how many days a week? Twice a week. All right. Tuesdays and Fridays. Linda, you have brought an example of what someone who has a subscription might get. And I must say that the way it's packaged um, starts off, but it's very attractively packaged. So show, show, show that well, off first, you. if you don't mind. We use craft paper uh -huh. uh, sleeves to protect the bouquet while we're in transit. So that's how it's delivered. So that's how it's delivered. So they can slip the sleeve off. It's rubber banded. We have the flower food mm -hmm. attached to every bouquet. And when they get them, they just remove the rubber band, mm -hmm. uh, put the flower food. Okay, I'll do that for you. In the water. So you encourage your um, subscribers to cut the stems as well? Yes. Okay. So after they receive it, give them a fresh cut. Um, it helps so much with absorption of yes. water. And you can cut them at an angle or you can cut them flat. Um, that's a personal preference. And so if you're, all you want to do is take them and put them in a vase, there you go. That's pretty fun and yeah. very attractive. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And brightens your house. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And if you want to take them, some people take them and work with them and make arrangements and they send me photos of them. It's that's fun. kind of fun, isn't it? it? Is. Yeah. And then you have, because you were in software for yes. many, many years, you have an analytical linear mind. And so you have, um, you can describe the ways that you like to select the flowers to put into each one of these bouquets. Yeah, well, you know, sometimes when you look at all the flowers, it can be overwhelming. And so it's just a little structure to help, you know, get it started so you can make a bouquet that you don't feel overwhelmed by. All right, well, I think we're gonna have you make one for us, if you don't mind. We have focal flowers, like lilies. The focal flowers are the main flower that people really notice. They're usually larger, and they're the ones people notice in the arrangements. But for them to be noticed, there's a whole lot that goes behind it. We, we like to use spikes. This is tuberose. Mm -hmm. This is used in perfumes. We also have salvia. Then we have the disc type flowers, which of course, this is a classic disc, but also the Rudbeckia ah. is a good one. Mm -hmm. And we also have Dara, 
which is sometimes called Chocolate Queen Anne's Lace. Wow! I haven't seen that before. That's cool. Yeah, it's a fun one. Uh -huh. Lots of zinnias, too. Oh, yes. These are a good disc right here. And so many colors. And there's, we grow three different sizes. A, a, a lot of people are only accustomed to seeing this larger one, the Canary's yes. Giant. But we also have uh, a medium size, which is this. Yes. And it comes in this this is called Queen Lime Blotch, so it's a bicolor zinnia. Lovely. And then this, these smaller ones are called Oklahoma. Oklahoma. And they're, <laughs> Funny name for yeah. a big state. <laughs> yeah. You never know why. Yeah. Some of the stories behind the names of the flowers are interesting. The fillers or the supporting flowers are, um, can be the discs. These are, this is Lysianthus. What a great color, too. It's, I love this. So many people love this. Mm -hmm. uh, it, and perfect for your purple yes, Tudor farm. Of course, I love it. The, um, it lasts a long time. Uh, it comes in a lot of different colors, but um, I like the purple. For the airy, you know, you want a little movement in the bouquet. Yeah. So this time of year, this is a, a good one to use. It's called uh, Rudbeckia triloba, mm -hmm. and it grows in these sprays. How lovely. And it is very hardy in the heat. The other kind of filler that we use is greenery, mm -hmm. like uh, eucalyptus. Yes. We use a lot of eucalyptus since it grows so well here. And this one is another pollinator lover, which is called mountain mint. Pink mint. Pygmanthum, and it is yeah. just the biggest pollinator magnet in the world. Yeah. The dahlias that are just coming out can okay. support as well. We like to start with the taller, spikier flowers, and um, so put them straight up, because they're going to be in the middle. In the middle, all right. And then we want to s slowly add the flowers so it forms a shape. Yes. You know, it's sort of a domed shape and we gradually add them down. So, and it, during the process, we're turning the bouquet. Oh. So that it gets filled out evenly. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is just exquisite. Let's clean up okay. and get a really nice picture of this.